Hi guys, it's probably Sharon. Welcome back to my channel. With back to school sales all around us right now and markers are dirt cheap, I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to make a video on how to create your own alcohol links because we know how expensive alcohol links are. This way you can make it for pennies. So today we're actually going to be focusing on mostly the Crayola, just regular Crayola markers, which are water soluble, I think they call it, the water markers and Sharpies, which are alcohol markers. And we're gonna see what we get when we mix those two and do them on their own. They ended up giving us some really awesome results. And like I said, this costs like pennies to do it. So let's get to it, guys. I'm starting off with some markers. Some of them, well, actually they're all old. They aren't dried out or anything, but you can still do this project with dried out old markers. I just replaced a lot of my markers because of the back to school sales that they're having right now. I could get markers for really cheap so I just replaced my old markers with some new ones and I'm going to try to make some alcohol inks with these. So you want to make sure that they are permanent markers. The Crayolas are water soluble I think it's called. So they're not alcohol inks, but you can still make alcohol inks with them. Um, I have not tried this with the washable Crayola markers. These are just the regular Crayola markers. All right, so the next thing that you'll need is some isopropyl alcohol, 91% or higher, and some pliers, needle nose pliers, something heavy duty that you would be using, you know, to put together shelves or whatever whatever the guys use them for right <laughs> so um yeah your jewelry pliers aren't going to work for this you need something strong and then if you have something like um, a little spray bottle or little dropper bottles something that maybe you had vitamins for your kids and you know the little dropper bottles if you've saved any of those those would be perfect to store your inks in um they also have, you know, little alcohol ink bottles like this that have a little cap on the top that you can um, seal to make sure it doesn't evaporate. I got these on Amazon and they also sell the little spray bottles that are about this size and that would work really well also. But to start off with, I'm just going to use some little clear cups you have little glass jars or anything like that I'm just using some of these little clear cups um, just to get our inks going so of course you're going to want to cover your surface um, if you can do this outside or in your garage it might be best because sometimes little pieces of these markers go flying and make sure that you have some gloves that you can put on so you don't stain your hands so I think just to show that you can use the water markers. Um, I'm going to do this one by itself so that we can see the difference when we're all done between using a water marker um, next to an alcohol marker. So the first thing that you'll want to do is take the marker apart. You want to pull this little part out and it's best to just pull it straight out. Make sure you have a hold of it really well and just pull. Try not to twist. I'm going to drop that in the cup. Okay, so then we have the barrel inside. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but it's being held in there by little um, ridges of plastic, if you can see that. So what I'm going to try to do, all the markers come apart differently, of course, depending on the brand. So what I'm going to do is this end piece should come off. So I'm going to grab that. And just kind of try to get that off. See? Just like that. All right. Now I'm going to try to grab that ink barrel. There we go. Easy as that. Okay. So we can cut this into bits or we could cut it down the side because it has like a layer of plastic around the outside. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is just Maybe cut it into thirds. 
if my scissors will cut through it. I'm just trying not to make any of this fly across the room. I don't want to clean up any ink stains. Now again, you could totally cut down that plastic bit to expose all of the fibers if you wanted to. Um, I'm going to just do it just like this. Hopefully it won't be a, quite as messy. I might end up shoving those little nubs into my ink um, bottle eventually. And if I have all of that loose fluff, it, it'll be harder to work with. Um, okay, so then we're just going to add a little bit of alcohol. I'm keeping in mind that my my jar that I'm going to be storing the alcohol in isn't very big. So I don't want to put too much um, alcohol that I'm wasting ink because I don't have anywhere to put it, right? Okay, I don't know if you can see that. And this is what it looks like. So I'm just going to let that sit. Of course, we don't want the alcohol to evaporate which is what will happen if I just leave it open like that. So I've actually just got some like cottage cheese lids and I'm just going to place that on the top. That will keep it from evaporating. And actually I'm going to set that aside somewhere else because I don't want to accidentally tip it over while I'm working on a different color. Just gonna wipe a little bit of that ink off. Okay, so that will be our water marker that we're... I'm trying to make alcohol ink out of, and that will be a good um, experiment to see what it looks like next to an actual alcohol ink marker. All right, so we can just pop all this back together and in the recycling. Okay, so I'm going to move this one aside because I don't want to do another orange. So I think next, since we took apart a Crayola, let's try to take apart a Sharpie. I think I'm going to mix. A Sharpie and a Crayola to make a, a gray color. So I'll just pull this one apart. So in a Sharpie, it will come apart around here. It's supposed to. Let me get another. Again, trying not to let it fly across the room. Mm. This one doesn't want to come apart. It's kind of starting, if you can see that. There we go. Now we just want to take that part out. Not really easily. And again, I think I'm going to cut it. It was just like the Crayola. It has a little plastic barrel filled with fibrous stuff that's holding the ink. And to clean off your scissors and your pliers and stuff, you can just use rubbing alcohol and that will wipe, wipe right off. I'm going to take the little nib out as well. Maybe. Oh, there's that. Okay, and then I'm going to do another... Crayola, since we've already done a Crayola, I'm not going to do that one on camera. Okay, so I got that second gray marker all cut up. So again, I'm just going to put some alcohol in the glass. And you can start to see, you know, see the, is it the Crayola one? It has kind of a greenish tinge. But you can see that the ink is already starting to pull out. I think the Sharpie, you can see it has like a reddish orange on the ends of those tubes. So it's kind of interesting, the colors that 
they use to make up the inks. All right, so I'm going to set this one aside. Over it. Okay, and the next one I want to do, I think I'm going to do brown, and I'm going to use a Sharpie, just a Sharpie. So we're going to have one Crayola by itself, which is the orange one. Then we have brown that has Crayola and Sharpie, so a, a water marker and an alcohol marker together. And then we're going to do one that is just the uh, alcohol marker which is the Sharpie. So we're going to do this one brown. I say don't twist, and then I just twist. I think it's just a, I don't know. You just want to twist when you're trying to pull something. But they do come out a lot better if you don't twist. Just try to keep yourself from twisting it. Okay, so I'll cut this one up and I'll come back. All right, so we have the brown all cut up into bits. We'll add our alcohol. So I think this is really awesome, especially this time of year, at least where I live, it's back to school time and you can get markers and stuff for like sometimes 70% off. So it's a good time to stock up on markers and alcohol inks, when you buy the actual alcohol inks, they are so expensive. And if you can get markers, like I think the pack of Crayola markers was a dollar or maybe it was 75 cents. Anyway, um, of course, Sharpies are a little more. But if you can get a pack of markers for, say, a dollar and the rubbing alcohol is, say, a dollar and you can make all these colors, it's like pennies. It's costing you pennies to make the alcohol ink. So it's like a really good way to save money and you can still have fun playing with alcohol inks without, you know, breaking the bank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover that one as well and I am going to check on it in a while and we'll see how it's doing. Okay, it's been about three hours. So let's take a look. Look, look at the orange one first. Actually, let me get my mic. Okay, hopefully that's better. All right, so we'll take a look at the orange one first. Um, you can see it's kind of, you can see the color kind of swirling around in there. Now remember, this was the water marker. So it looks like we might have some little chunks of color in there. So I don't know how that's going to work with the, you know, using it to, do some art with. Let's take, this is just a piece of watercolor paper. I'm just going to stir this up a little bit and let's see what it looks like on the paper. So of course we'll have to let it dry a little bit. We can see little chunks of color in there. So I'm wondering if we could strain out those little chunks of color. I'm going to try to do that. The little bottles came with a little funnel. So I'm just going to put the funnel in there and I'm going to use just a tiny piece of a paper towel and see if I can strain some of those chunks out. We'll see. We'll try it um, leaving it as it is as well and see what the end result looks like. might take a minute for that to strain out and this might leave us with a really pale pale orange so maybe using the cheap back to school markers aren't the way to go but we'll see how it goes strain out a little bit of that let that strain hopefully it doesn't tip over Okay, for now we're just going to set that aside. Actually, I wanted to squeeze out some more of the color.
kind of these um, bits. I was even thinking about just setting them aside to dry and then putting them in a little baggie, you know, all the orange ones, all the, you know, in separate baggies for each color and then trying to make more ink with them later because obviously there's still a little bit of dye left in there. That's the orange. So I'm gonna set that one aside again. Now we have, this was the gray. So we mixed water marker and an alcohol-based marker. They were both gray, so let's have a look and see what that looks like. It's a little dark, so it's hard to see. I don't see any, any of the chunky colors, but it could just be because it's a darker color too. Just take a little bit and put it on this watercolor paper and see what it looks like. So it kind of looks like a greenish teal, dark, teal maybe instead of gray but that's just the different dyes that they use to make up the the gray color you know when you dilute it you might get a different color so and I do see some little bits of the chunks not as much as the orange but I'm sure that's probably coming from the water marker and I do like how it's kind of separating so you see gray and then you see blue green around the edge it's kind of cool Okay, so I'm going to squeeze out color out of these little little nibs. I don't know what you call it, ink cartridge. So even though I was wanting a gray, I think it's kind of cool it turned out this color because I do like working with this color as well. So it was a happy accident. Okay, I'm going to see if this straining the orange one worked at all. Because if it did, I might want to strain some of the gray too. So like I thought would happen, it's really not very much color in there. It's orange, but it's really a light orange. I'm going to drip about on that so we can kind of see what it looks like without the chunks of pigment in there. So here's the drip I just did without all the pigment in it. So it's just a really pale orange, which, I mean, we can still work with that. All right, so now we'll take a look at the brown, and this one was Sharpie, so it was an alcohol ink. So I didn't mix it with anything else. This is totally all alcohol ink, so let's we'll check and see if it has any of that pigment chunks. There's a fly in here. Okay. This is the brown. I don't see any chunks of the, any pigment. So that's obviously coming from the watercolor markers. And I really like that brown. It turned out really great.
Okay, so I have, I mentioned getting like a medicine bottle. So I have this empty bottle. I should have taken the label off of it, but, and it has the little dropper and I've cleaned it up really well. I'm going to put the brown one in here just because the bottle is already brown. I think I still feel, I think that little nib might still be in there. Anyway, I'm just going to try to put this in here. Ooh, I didn't even spill any. Okay, so here's our brown. Um, it filled it about halfway full. So that one's good because I, I don't feel like I need to strain that one. It looked fine just um, as is. So I'm going to make sure I label that so I don't think it's my, you know, so I know it's ink. Okay. Now our orange one. Here's the one that we strain some of that stuff out of and it's already in its little bottle there's not much in there I might have to strain the rest um so let me get rid of that this is enough to test with now if I can just find the lid there we go see these lids are really I'm sure if we left it as it was those little bits would have clogged up this nozzle so it's probably good that we strain that out and then, oh, this stupid fly, it won't go away. I think we're going to strain a little bit of this as well. I'll hurry and do some off camera. Okay, I think I have enough strain to um, continue on. This is just another piece of watercolor paper. I just, it was full sheets and I cut it into fours just so we had a smaller um, piece to work with. So what I'm first going to do is I'm just going to, we're just going to test these out and see how they work. So I'm just going to put down a little bit of the orange. And then this is the brown. No, this is the gray. This is the brown. And you could always spritz some water or some just regular alcohol just to kind of get some more movement. I'm going to use my finger. Now, you, do you see how watercolor paper has that texture? I don't know if that is being picked up on the camera. So one side has this texture and the other side is just flat. Okay. Now I'm just going to turn it down so the rough side is down and just kind of try to pick up some of that ink. It should dry pretty quickly. I mean, I should have put a little more down, but it looks really nice. I mean, the gray obviously turned out more of a turquoise. The orange is very pale, but it, it works. And the brown is kind of a reddish brown, but I think that is really nice. Let's try a little bit more. I, I want to put down a little more orange. To cover it a little bit more. There we go. Okay, I also got out some um, photo paper. Let's see what that's like. This is glossy photo paper. Um, I'm sure matte would probably be similar to the watercolor paper except smooth. Um, so let's go ahead and try doing a little something with the photo paper and see how that works out. Here's the gray, which is actually a teal color. Our photo paper, putting the glossy side down. Should dry quite quickly. Hmm, I really like that. I wish I would have done more colors for the video. 
Yeah, that'll dry really quickly. Let's see, I think this is this is a nice, cheaper way to work with alcohol inks. I've also just got some regular cardstock. Just regular cardstock. So I thought we'd see how that works out. Goes right through but it turns out really pretty too I mean so you have you know different options you can use to do the alcohol inks there's the cardstock this is the watercolor paper and this is photo paper so they all turn out really well so I want to do one more thing I want to try using some of the stuff with the water color markers that had the little bits of color and kind of see how that works. I think I'll use a piece of watercolor paper for this. Now these would be pretty to make tags and stuff with. Okay. I'm just going to use my little dropper. There's still some color in there. I'm not too worried about it. <clears throat> so I'm just going to pick up some of that with my dropper. I'll do some of the gray or actually teal. I don't think I'm going to use brown on this one just because these two are the ones that had the pigment, chunks of pigment. So I just want to see how it works out without uh, straining it. See if it's still, you know, if this a good result or if it's definitely something we need to strain. Well, there's definitely chunks. Yeah, you can definitely see the chunks. So, I mean, if that doesn't bother you, I don't see any reason why you couldn't just leave it like that. It doesn't look like an alcohol ink, but it's kind of a cool, um, I don't know, kind of a cool look on its own. So, yeah. Anyway, I hope that you found this video helpful, and thank you so much for staying until the end. Please like and subscribe, and I hope to see you when I create my next video. Bye, guys.